Hello, and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio, where you can discuss, debate, and get advice on how to discover and shed the bitches of fear, insecurity, self-doubt, and negative mindsets, so you can realize your dreams and life purpose, and create and accelerate the riches you want in life. Join us here live every Tuesday at noon Eastern, and dialogue with us at 818-572-2910. You can also chat with us at Blog Talk Radio slash Shedding the Bitch. Or share your stories on our website at SheddingTheBitch.com. Whatever the bitch is that's holding you back from living your life to the fullest, it's not worth giving up the riches in life that you deserve. So call in now and let Bernadette Bowes know what's holding you back. 818-572-2910. Good day, good day, good day, everyone, and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio. And of course, yes, I am Bernadette Bowes. I am so excited that you're here. Because what better way to kick off the new year, because we are still in January, at least for a few more days, than to really have a discussion about kind of what goes on between your two ears and what is that self-talk that is either propelling you forward or it's holding you back. And so our guest today is going to give us six ways to overcome that negative self-talk and that negative thinking. But before we get there... I want to thank all of our new listeners and viewers, those that are following us and finding us on Blog Talk Radio, on iTunes, on Stitcher, or any of your streaming services, as well as on our YouTube channel, Shedding the Bitch TV. And you might even be watching it uh, live streamed on Shedding the Bitch Facebook page. I am just grateful that you're here And we would love your comments, your likes, your follows, your subscribes, your ratings, and any feedback that you might have about what are the topics that are really top of mind to you. And do you have favorite guests, um, favorite podcasters, favorite authors, favorite speakers that you would love to learn more from? All right. So uh, then I also want to thank our uh, current and longtime listeners and viewers, because it's you that's also helping to get the new eyes and ears on the program because of your likes, follows, shares, subscriptions to our channels, so forth and so on. So please continue to do that. Facebook, Shedding the Bitch page on Blog Talk Radio. You just look for Shedding the Bitch Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, and anywhere you get your podcast. Um, and of course, on Shedding the Bitch TV on YouTube. All right. Thank you so much. And I'd love to thank North Georgia Tax Solutions. Debbie Smelling and her team um, are uh, full service financial and tax services. And she services small to corporate sized clients all over the country, not just here in Georgia. So please reach out to her at ngtaxsolutions.com. Tell her I said hi and um, that you heard about heard about her and her team right here on Shedding the Bitch Radio. All right, let's get into this and let's welcome our smiley guest (laughs) that has been there patiently waiting. Okay, so we're going to talk about six ways to overcome negative thinking and truly succeed. It's the idea about the power of self-talk. It's a powerful tool for freeing ourselves from a trap of negativity, overcoming fears and self-doubt and achieving your goals. So this is his big idea, our guest, Peter Rupert. This is a big idea. Our ability to stretch towards success is tied to how we think, but we have a choice in how we shape that thinking. If we let ourselves view every bad experience as proof we're not meant to succeed, we limit ourselves from taking key risks. Who can raise your hand to that? But we can reframe our perception, see failure as opportunity, and accomplish far greater things than we've ever thought of. Now, in his new book, Unlim- oh, I'm sorry, in his new book, Limitless, Nine Steps to Launch Your One Extraordinary Life, author and education entrepreneur Peter Rupert reveals the hurdles we place in front of ourselves and shows how to overcome each one. He weaves in stories from his own life and career, and it's a journey marked by his discovery in the power of self-belief. This is what I want you to be listening for, everyone. Uh, And then I'll give you your rich question and explain that in a second. I want you to be thinking about, and you're going to be taking away, how to practice a positive mindset until it becomes an empowering habit. Why journaling, give it up for journaling, is such a powerful tool for transforming our self-awareness. And how to develop the skill of reframing and use it to push past self-doubt. 
All right, I want to introduce you to Peter. Peter Rupert is founder and CEO of iEducation Group, which operates over 75 Fusion and Futures academies for grades 6 through 12 in one student, one teacher classroom environment. A 21-year veteran of our education industry, he's opened up over 100 schools and acquired more than 25 others. When does he sleep, you ask? Um, he's been president and CEO of organizations in the private school, charter schools, and early education industries, and sat on, sorry, and sat on his local public school board for five years. He lives with his family in Grand Rapids, Michigan. His new book is Limitless, Nine Steps to Launch Your ex One Extraordinary Life. And you can learn more about Peter and his books and his work at Peter Rupert. Dot com and that's r u p p e r t dot com. How are you, Peter? Great, Bernadette. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Peter, I um inter I introduce a rich question for our audience because they might have come on to the program and they're just you know they're like, well, you know, I don't have negative self talk or I know what I need to do there, and I want them grounded in in our conversation so they then intentionally listen for things that might be affecting them, all right? So everyone's rich question for today is, what negative self-talk, and trust me, we all have it, but what negative self-talk, scribble it down, put it in your head right now, hold you back, is preventing you from living one extraordinary life, as Peter mentioned, all right? So ground yourself in that, and we're gonna get into, into this conversation. So Peter, based on your, your uh, uh, you know, renowned background in education. I'd like to go back a little bit with a little backstory for uh, to ask you kind of how did your experience in education and working with six to 12 grades and in this environment, I love it, one-on-one, -on -one, beautiful. Um, but what did that experience teach you or reveal to you to where then you were provoked to write this book and do the work that you do? Great question, Bernadette. And, and before I answer that, let me just make a, a, a quick clarification on our website. My website is PeteRupert.com. So my apologies. That's okay. My apologies, my apologies. No worries. Peter Rupert was taken, so I am PeteRupert.com. No oh, oh, okay. And because the R in Rupert, it lo okay, got yes, it. Yes, exactly. So okay. PeteRupert.com. PeteRupert.com. Excellent. Excellent. But yeah, anyway, uh, to answer your question, you know, I've been in the education industry for, gosh, over 21 years, 20, probably 22 or 23 now. And uh, I've had the experience of really watching students. And, and while I'm not an educator by training, I grew up in business and, and I got into the business side of education. But in visiting schools after schools and hearing about student stories, you realize about, uh, you realize how important self-belief is to a kid uh, and to their future. And, and as we all know, as adults, it's also extremely important to us throughout our life. Mm -hmm. At that young age, and, and so many kids battle uh, a lot of challenges, the, the difficult years, especially in middle and high school, where uh, people are bullied or made fun of, or people hold they're not any good, or, or come from challenging situations that, are, that uh, can tear them down. And, and most people were able to recover from that, but many people, it scars them for life and it, and it carries into adulthood and, and really hinders them when it comes time to pursue their dreams and whatever it is that they want to do with their life. And so um, that experience, along with my own experience and some of the trials and tribulations I went through in my early years, in my 20s and early 30s, um, it forced me to really start to study what is it that successful people do. And so as I analyzed and studied successful people, I, I learned so much and I started to see these common themes that show up. And that's ultimately what's led to this book. Nice. I use these secrets that I gather, these, what, what seem like universal secrets in so many of these amazingly successful people from all walks of life, uh, created a cheat sheet for myself to inspire me on a daily basis. Um, and then ultimately as I share it with others and, and, uh, shared it with people in my organization, uh, people said, you've just got to turn this into a book. And so that's what led to what is now Limitless um, and uh, the nine steps we have there. Right. That's awesome. Now, let me ask you, just so we can make sure everyone's really kind of 
bringing the truth to the surface. I always say truth sits on the surface. Can you give us an example from your um, backstory and from your experience, like you said, in your 20s and 30s, where your negative self-talk and what was that negative self-talk and what was the impact it had on you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know that uh, when I was uh, shortly after I graduated from business school, uh, I was working for a consulting firm and, and my boss there came to me and said, hey, we can go off and break out on our own and create our own consulting firm. And we can do this better and and be more successful, et cetera. And so I was such I had such this desire to become an entrepreneur that I jumped at it and I was naive and really didn't know what I was doing. But I jumped at the opportunity and um, we uh, then we had some success and we built a consulting practice. We ended up opening offices in, in three or four cities around the country um, and had grown, um, added clients and things, but never really made any money, any extra dollars we had, we put back into the business. And ultimately uh, our client flow dried up. We lost several clients seemingly all at the same time. Our new client flow wasn't coming together. And all of a sudden we ran out of money uh, we had never prepared for the rainy day, and so we had to close the business down. And so I was 33 years old. At the time, we were expecting, my wife and I were expecting our first child. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, my gosh, here I was. I'm this business school grad who supposedly had this bright future. And in five years after I graduated from business school, I'm out of a job. I've, I've already lost a business. And many of my other friends who peers from business school or said were just starting to accelerate in their career path. And so there's a lot of self-talk and self-doubt in my mind that says, oh, my gosh, well, you're not anything like them and, and you're a failure and, and uh, you just have to go get a job and just be happy with being employed. Um, and it took a lot of self-talk to myself. And that was a lot of time when I was studying other successful people and I realized how prevalent failure is for so many successful people. One of my big learnings in my research was today we see successful people and we look at them at the end of their journey and we see them up on a pedestal and we say, oh my gosh, well, that person had all the luck and, and never really had any trials and tribulations. And it was just a straight line to success. We just make this assumption. But then when you really read about their biographies or hear more details, you hear about how many how many of them had so many failures and obstacles along the way. Yep. So that really inspired me to say, Hey, this, this failure of my business didn't have to define me at 33. I didn't have to go into a shell and just say, okay, well now you're just going to be some employed guy and hopefully have a nice job and be able to support your family right. more to your future. And so being able to break, break out of that negative self-talk was really, really important. Yeah. Um, well, I want to I want to touch on too the fact that you know you explained how people think successful people it's just a straight line they had all this luck and all this opportunity and it's funny because I I'll often see you'll see successful people and or even like in the entertainment industry and people will be like oh they're an overnight success and so you know somebody will say to them oh so you're an overnight success and they're like well it's you know living in my car for five years. And like eating ramen noodles for 12 years, you know, and selling everything that I had and losing a home means that I'm an overnight success. <laughs> and, and it's true. We just don't look behind the curtain, so to speak, to realize that we all travel a very similar path, right? Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And, and, and that's what I think this, I hope this book brings to life is that, gosh, failures and trials and, and, and challenges. Is, is, is so indicative in all of our lives that everyone goes through them. It's just how we respond to them. Yes. We train our mind. I, the first chapter of the book, as you saw, Bernadette, is win the battle in your head. So for me, if we can't win that battle, because we all have this negative and positive self-talk, if we can't win that bottle, battle, everything else doesn't really mean anything, the other steps in the book. So right. I spend a lot of time on understanding what positivity is all about and, and training yourself to uh, be able to, to speak positively to yourself and let that voice win much more often than the negative voice does. Uh, absolutely. Now, would you, would you say that, because um, we're, our society um, is so focused on someone, you know, getting the perfect education and, and building that perfect resume and, and getting to that perfect, you know, type of company and position and whatever the case might be. 
And yet, even when they do, they still don't get success. Like even your story that you were mentioning, they still don't get the success because what they didn't do is spend a great deal of time working on the mindset. They're, they're, they're always honing their skill set, but they're not focused on working on the mindset. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. And I, I think sometimes people can be successful and never really believe, never really um, have any self-satisfaction because they've kind of followed this pattern of the least risky alternative. And many of them have become successful in their own right financially or whatever. They have a career that, they're, that helps pay the bills and raise their family, but it's never really what they wanted to do. And, and I know a lot of people who are my age who regret that they never took a chance, that they never took a risk. And, and uh, while they've been successful on paper, never felt like they really were able to pursue their dreams and instead just kind of settled for, hey, this is good enough. Um, and then you look back and say, you know, I've worked for 40 years and I'm not real. I've never really been happy in what I've done. Yeah. Cause they've never really, again, truth comes to the surface. They never really owned their dreams. They've never declared. I, I always say declare, own and achieve your, your, your goals and your dreams. Um, I think that's fascinating because, you know, and, and it's sad also that we get to our forties, fifties and sixties and realize that, oh my gosh, I, I went after something totally, you know, not aligned to who I am and what I truly want. So I, as I was doing research for today's um, discussion, there is a lot of books around negative self-talk. You, all you have to do is Google that or even six, I put in six ways to, you know, overcome, you know, negative self-talk. So what makes your book limitless? What makes your book different and unique and more powerful than the other books that are out there. Thanks, Bernadette. And you're absolutely right. And that was one of the reasons I hesitated um, in writing the book initially, right? Because I had self-talk there too. Who am I to write a book, right? I've never authored a book. And so you have to win all those things ahead of time that say, okay, your message is good and it'll resonate. And um, But what I really tried to do, and I think what's unique about my book is one, it's 150 pages. So I wanted to be short to the point and impactful. Uh, two, I wanted to uh, give the reader access to dig deeper and, and provide a lot of other resources. So at the end of each chapter, there's a, lit, there's a section called Dig Deeper. And so in that, for, around that chapter lesson, there's podcasts and books and, and articles and videos and, and things like that that people can go watch or read and, and learn more about from the real experts. Right. Well, and then behind that, at the very end of each chapter is a little workbook kind of piece. So people can actually scratch down their ideas with this whole idea of building a plan for their future. So when they finish, they can do that. So it allows a person to um, quickly read it, come back to it time and time again to find other resources if they really want to master a topic or dig deeper, like I mentioned, um, and uh, be something that they uh, can turn to uh, time and time again. And even on our website, for instance, we have this life plan form that I, that I put in the book, but I put it on my website as well at PeteRupert.com, where they can each year go and download that and rewrite their plan and adjust their plans that they're constantly thinking about uh, where they want their life to go and they're creating those goals accordingly. Right. And I think that's all, and you can tell you're an educator, <laughs> no, which is awesome because I, I definitely, you know, I, you know, I, it's like, it's not woo woo. It's a how to, and, you know, I think it's just critical for people not only to read stuff, you know, that's why uh, bookstores are packed with books because people just read stuff and they don't, they're not applying it, you know, to where then they're actually making changes and making shifts in their life, you know, based on what they're learning. So that is a beautiful, that is just, as well, it's a beautiful but powerful format because it allows someone to take what it is that they're reading and apply it immediately to their lives. Yeah, well, thank you. And, and you're right. I mean, there's, there's a lot of those kind of books out there and a lot of them are 300 and 400 pages. That was not my interest. I wanted to provide something that's practical and hard. And it's just like when we, you know, one of the things that I learned along the way is that if you want to achieve something, you better write it down. I tell my kids down to this day, every year I make them set their own goals. And I just learned in my late 20s, early 30s, that the power of achieving a vision is writing it down. And, and mm -hmm. for whatever reason, your brain goes to work subconsciously toward those goals once you write those down. That's kind of the first 
step of committing to something. Yep. So that process of constantly revisiting, writing things down helps move your body uh, physically and subconsciously toward that goal. Love it. Love it. Well, and that brings me to uh, my question um, because I loved when I read that you were into journaling, like, you, the, you know, it's part of the process, uh, writing it down and journaling. So what is journaling? What do you tell your students? What do you tell, you know, others um, in regards to how to leverage journaling, what that really is? Because people are like, oh, do you have a diary? And I'm like, you know, <laughs> so what's your, yeah. what's your take on journaling? Yeah, and I'm not a diary writer at all either, never have been. And, and um, you know, my, my big focus on journaling is in those last minutes before you shut your eyes and you dream and you, and, you, and you refresh for the next day, I think it's great. And this ties into that win the battle in your head, that positive mindset, um, that we, we take a few minutes, we open our journal, and we just write three victories from the day. What are, what are three things that went well that we feel good about? So our last, before we turn off that light, our last thought are the three things that went well, right? It could be four, it could be two, whatever it is. But it's the idea of getting the habit of realizing that even when we're going through tough times, there are victories we have every day. But we have to remind ourselves of that or otherwise we get, we get sucked into this negative negativity. And for people who are trying to break away from that, that habit of writing three successes that happened that day, even if they're small ones, is great to build on. And then as you go through a year, you look back and you have a thousand victories that you've captured uh, over the course of that year. And it just kind of reminds you of, you know what, um, even during tough times, there's a lot of really good things going on in my life and, and helps us feel better about things and help us build our, our self-esteem, if you will. Yep. What self-esteem is built on. It's not somebody telling you you're good. It's about you you convince yourself you have abilities to do things. Oh, I love that. I love it, love it, love it. So what would you say, you know, from everything that you've included in, in, in your book and actually in, in your studies and in the work that you do, what would you say is the most important step one should take when it comes to getting over their negative self-talk? Um. Well, I, there, there's, in, in the article, I think, that you read, I talk about the six steps of, of uh, building toward a positive mindset. But as I think about what are the most important things is, one, I think the most important step is to realize that we all have a negative voice and a positive voice that speak to us constantly. And two, that it's not, that it's not just us, but even the most successful people have a negative voice and a positive voice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even... So people, I think too often we live this life and we think, oh my gosh, I'm no good. Uh, I can't do this. Don't take a risk. Um, no way you can be successful at that. So we, we convince ourselves that we're, we're not uh, uh, capable of doing something. And, and it's important for us to realize that even though those amazingly successful people we see on TV or whatever have those same self-doubts even now when they're on the red carpet or when they're accepting those big awards, those people have the same kind of negativity in their minds and they've just found a way to win. And so, you know, following that, it's that idea of creating that mindset that says, okay, there may be a lot of negative things in my life and in my, in my mind right now, but I know because millions of people have done this before me, I can turn it around and I can reframe that into positivity and then you use things like ending your days with writing down your daily victories and some of the other things I talked about it. that Love help it. you get back on track nice nice well and I think um you you talk a great deal about failure um and in 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 a way of where failure is such a critical critical part of just our journey so you can can you help describe how failure is so important to success to the point where to the point where we have to be okay with it. We have to be almost like befriend it. We have to kind of like wrap our arms around it and actually look for it. That, I think that goes back to, you know, in your introduction, you talked about ensuring that you're able to um, overcome failure or at least embrace it so you can take big risks so you can succeed. Yeah, failure is just so critically important. And I think as a society, unfortunately, we, too much, we put too much negativity around failure, right? oh my gosh, I can't take this because if I fail, that means I'm a loser and I'm not any good. 
Um, and again, what, when you study successful people, you hear about the many failures that they've had. And for me, and I think for all the listeners out there, is that when you fail, it means that you're pushing your capabilities. <laughs> and in order to push your capability, in order to achieve your dreams, you have to push your capabilities a little bit, means, which means you step outside your comfort zone. And, we, and when you, sometimes when we step outside our comfort zone, we fall in it, right? But many times we step outside of our comfort zone, we are able to be successful. And, and when we fail, as we all know, that's the greatest learning that we have, more so than anything else. And so if we're pushing ourselves, uh, we're going to fail a little bit because that's just a natural part of learning. It's like when a child's learning how to walk, right? If they just gave up the first time they tried to walk and fell, well, they never learned. They never walk. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like that, right? That's a great analogy. We're, that's when a we're great starting analogy. out as infants. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I think that's just so, so critically important in that if someone's going through life and never failing, then that's a sign that they've never really, really pushed their capabilities and they're not really touching their true potential. Yeah. You know, what, how would you describe the person? Um, and this is going to get a little, I think a little touchy feely, maybe not, but how do you, you know, how, what would you say or how would you describe that person if they were standing in front of you of those people that are scared to fail and that they, you know, are, are just kind of constantly holding themselves back from achieving? Well, you know, Carol, I'm a big fan of Carol Dweck and I talk about her in the book and her book about mindset. And she talks about a uh, uh, growth mindset and a fixed mindset. And the fixed mindset is the person who believes that your capabilities and your and your skills are kind of fixed and that you not you can't necessarily grow those or improve upon those yeah true those people are going to be people who play it safe um and you know i think a lot of these people who play it safe even if they're quote unquote successful in some form or fashion um end up in their career later late in their careers or late in their lives saying i wish i had done this or i wish i had done that and i, I as I speak to young people, I, I just, I, I make that, I really emphasize that idea of don't be 55 or 60 or 65 and say, I wish I could have done this, or I wish I would have done that. And, and don't look back regretting what you didn't do right. uh, in the, in the name of playing it safe or, or not failing. Yeah. Uh, because at the end of the day, like I said, we're not growing if we're not pushing ourselves a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So who out there, who's playing it safe, Who's playing it comfortable? Who's playing it, you know, that you've had success and yet at the same time, you might not know that success that really kind of pushes you and puts you out there. Um, really think about it because, um, you know, you, you don't want, I'm gonna, about to turn 59 uh, in a couple of days. You don't want to be sitting there at, you know, 59, 50, you know, 75, even at 35 or 40 and be like, I'm not living you know, my uh, optimal life. I'm not living that, that one optimal life. Um, so could you give us an idea of the, you know, the nine, way, nine steps to launch your one extraordinary life? Could you give us, you know, kind of some taste around what your recommendations are for doing that? Sure, yeah. And the first one, like we talked about earlier, was that winning the battle in the right. head. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the other ones that are really important are um, to uh, really, I, I call it a, a chapter that I call um, dream big and then make it bigger. Um, so often, even when we think about what we love to do, we limit our, we limit our uh, potential because we just don't think about how big we could actually make something or do something. And so I really encourage people to write out what you want to do and then make it even bigger. Think about what, if it really went great, what would, what would it be? What would your life look like? Um, and then I tie that into writing it down, like I mentioned earlier, that power of writing a vision statement, being as descriptive as you can. Think out five years, 20 years, 25 years, whatever it is, pick that time frame, and write that, that almost that news article about yourself, about what you've done, what you've achieved. Oh beauty of your family, the, the balance in your life, the morals you stand for, all those things. And by writing it down, again, we start to convince our mind that it's already happening. And, they, and somehow, I'm not a brain expert, but subconsciously, the, the mind just helps 
the body work towards that. And so right. that idea of really dreaming big and, and making it bigger and writing it down is important. Another real chapter in here is about finding a champion. Um, it's tough to go pursue your dreams and, and to uh, achieve that one extraordinary life if you're doing it on your own. Mm -hmm. All of us need champions. And so I talk about how mentors have, have really been an important part of my life. And some mentors can be people who are older, more senior, who kind of carved that path and, and you reach out to them and, and ask for their advice and counsel and, and they provide a ton of wisdom. Other mentors can be a peer group um, that are, have similar goals and dreams and aren't, aren't willing to settle for uh, good enough. That frankly sometimes means you have to break away from the peer group that you're currently with. Um, I've read a, I think you've probably seen this too, but you read this periodically that we're, we're the average of the 10 people we spend the most time with. And so if you want to achieve uh, dreams or do, uh, do things extraordinary in your life, hang out with other people who have those same kind of dreams, even though they not be specifically what you're doing, but they have that same kind of mindset of right. making the most out of their life. And, and so finding that champion and that mentor is, is another really important part of this. Do you, um, do you give recommendations um, to even young people as far as how they go about that? Because I get that question a lot. You know, I get that question a lot. So what, what, how, what do you recommend when it comes to, especially if they're young, you know, and, and, you know, even though we speak to, you know, kind of adults on this show, those adults have children. Um, so, you know, what do you recommend to those children and or their parents as far as what they should be looking for, other than the fact that maybe they have the same mindset and, and they're going or are where they want to be. But how, you know, then all of a sudden, how do you actually put that to action? Yeah, great question. Um, and I think if you, let's take, for example, a recent college grad, right? I would think about looking for champions in a couple ways. Um, some, some person, some individual who might be three or four years older that the person knows loosely, but not very well, but you see that person is starting to live the life that, that you'd like to have down the road great person to reach out to and say, hey, I'm just getting started. Um, can, we, uh, can we sit down? I'd love to learn more about your career or, or, or what you're doing and, and get your advice on how I can emulate some of the amazing things that you're already doing at a very young age. So that would be, mm -hmm. one. and another one would be uh, if it's a career track or, or what have you that you're, that you're passionate about and you have a lot of interest in, that you reach out to someone who might be 10 or 15 or 20 years older and say, hey, I've admired you from afar. You don't even know me, but it, it could be just a letter um, or a, a handwritten letter is always so powerful if you track down their address or an email or a connection on LinkedIn. And what I found is most people are afraid to ask. Yeah. So we say, oh, why don't, why don't I have any mentors or champions? Well, I've never asked anybody. And I, I just know from my own personal experience that when I ask people, they always seem to volunteer. People who have been successful want to give back. Mm -hmm like a young person or even an adult who wants to get better reaching out to somebody and say can you help um now occasionally somebody will say no because they're too busy or what have you but that's okay it's just enough yeah. let's move on to the next person but right. if we don't ask if we don't write that letter if we don't connect on linkedin or if we don't do this uh make that first step um nothing ever happens and so we can just sit and feel sorry for ourselves that we don't have any mentors or champions but they're yeah. certainly out there Absolutely. Oh, I'm so glad you got there because that, that is so critical because um, adults, even, you know, very mature, seasoned individual, maybe not seasoned as much as, and they don't ask. They don't ask. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that. All right. So we, we touched on dreaming big and your personal visions and your journey. And we're talking journaling and we're ta talking about how all of that, writing your victories down, uh, can help you overcome your um, negative self-talk. Uh, what, well, one, I guess I would say, do you espouse to your, your students and, and to others, like affirmations, mantras, anything to wear, you know, recordings, you know, are there certain tools that someone could use that and I, and I absolutely love the idea of your book being so interactive to where they could be working at the end of each book, gaining new resources to reach out to. 
um, or to acquire, and then to do some 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 work regarding the subject that you're teaching. But what do you what's your thought on kind of affirmations, mantras, that kind of thing? It's, it's so important. And and here here's what. What, what I've done forever is when I created my first vision statement and wrote it out like that news article I talked about and really talked about here's where I want to be in 15 years. Um, I put it on my, um, uh, on my bedroom, uh, my bed, excuse me, my, my bedroom closet wall, right where I get dressed every day. And so for years it sat there and I looked at it every day and I read it and it constantly reminded me, and that's that affirmation because you're talking about what your finished state's going to look like. Yep. And even though you're not even close when you first write that down, by reading that every day, you're again built, driving into your mind that subconsciously your mind's going to help you move toward that. So yeah. that's one way to do it. I know other people have created um, vision boards and put that in their closet or in their bathroom mirrors or whatever. Right behind me. Right behind me. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah, I love it. That's great. That's exactly right. And then, and some people like the uh, affirmations and, and yeah. it's easier for a person to say, Hey, I'm, every morning I'm going to have these three affirmations. It kind of ties nicely into journaling, writing your victories at the end of the day, you start every day with the affirmations about yourself. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of that because that repetition is what makes it into a habit, right? And when you're talking, talking positively about yourself, when you're constantly thinking about, okay, what's the future state of who I am as a being out five years, 20 years, whatever it is, then you're constantly reminding of where you're going. And that helps you avoid some of the temptations and some of the downfalls to the, today as you move toward where you want to be in the future. Right. I know earlier you said, um, you said like, you're not a brain guy, but, um, um, and I want to mention that, uh, your brain, I just, actually, I just learned this recently um, because I'm not a brain person either, though I'm right up your alley with all, everything that you're talking about. But I did just learn your brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. And that's why, that's why to everything that you're talking about, about speaking to yourself and, and envisioning yourself in the state that you, you know, in the future vision that you want to be, your brain knows no difference between you making that up and you actually living that experience. And therefore, that's why it's so powerful that uh, visioning, visualization um, is, you know, works because your brain knows no different between you making that up and reality. So if you're constantly telling yourself this imagination, this vision, the, the brain's going to start working toward it. Yeah. Love that. I had never heard it put that way, but that's exactly. I had never either. I had never either. I thought it was absolutely like, fabulous the fabulous yeah. yeah and and a great just so you could share it with your students if you want a great um analogy not an analogy but a study that harvard did that this gentleman told me about was the fact that they brought you know pianists famous pianists into a room and they studied their they, they scanned their brain while they were playing the piano and they watched what sec, you know segments of the brain got stimulated because of their because of their uh playing and because they're, you know, musicians. Um, and then they had this, a, a group of pianists come in and pretend, close their eyes and imagine them playing the piano, just visualizing that they're playing the piano. And the same exact parts of the brain were stimulated. So that's my, that's my little teaching for today, even though this is about you. But I, I think it's just a great uh, example you might be able to use along with that imagination and, and reality are the same. Anyway, all right. So, um, so share, you know, share with us, um, I, you know, kind of how can people reach out to you? How can people get your book? Um, you know, what, what do they need to know about Pete Rupert? at PeteRupert.com, uh, but, but what would they uh, want to know? Well, I think if anyone's interested in learning more about me, you can go to, like you said, PeteRupert.com. Um, there's more information about uh, my background and, and information about the book. There's actually a link to actually buy the book um, that'll take you right to Amazon, but you can find, uh, if you just, also, if you go to Amazon, you can find the book under Limitless Pete Rupert or Peter Rupert, either one works. Um, and uh, barnesandnoble.com also send, sells it as well. 
So, but if you just go to my website, you can click on a link, it'll take you right there and you can just order it. Um, one of the nice things about this is all the pro, all the net proceeds we're able to generate from sales of the book are going to go to our Fusion Scholarship Foundation, which is to help um, help uh, families who otherwise can't afford our private school tuition uh, be able to pay for scholarships for them. And so there's a there's a nice benefit to it as well that people are giving back by um, helping themselves by buying the book. That's fabulous that is fabulous so okay so is there anything more to talk to about the foundation about that scholarship anything that people should know about because that's fabulous well you know as you can imagine our schools when every class is taught one teacher one student they're very expensive private schools and and so we're working with families um, <clears throat> who can afford to write those checks uh, but we try as best we can to ensure uh, other some families who can't afford can who can attend to a scholarship program. And so uh, this, is, this foundation was recently launched by some of our uh, parents who attended the school and said, hey, we'd love to give back. And so they helped kind of create this foundation uh, that allows us to raise money. And many of the families who come to us are very wealthy. And so they're happy to give back uh, because we had such a big impact on their child. They want to give back and that helps us be able to provide scholarships for other people. So it's just something that we started a few years ago. We're just trying to get our, getting our sea legs going, but I'm really nice. through uh, sales of this book, we'll be able to provide um, a little bit of donation every time we um, were able to sell a book. That's awesome. Okay, everybody, come on. The book is fabulous anyway, and it's very different and unique from any other book around negative self-talk and everything else that you need to do to be a very successful individual. Um, so please, please, please check it out, PeteRupert.com. Uh, let's see, um, Twitter, you're on Twitter? I am, yep, and LinkedIn. And, and uh, if people want to message me on my website, there's a way you can just send me an email, and I'm happy to respond to any of those emails and communicate with folks in, in any way I can. Awesome, awesome. And if they, because, you know, this is global, so if they wanted to be kind of insert themselves into your foundation, is that, can they learn more at um, Pete Rupert or, or at Fusion Education Group or? Yes, if they go to fusionacademy.com, um, in there, and there's a, a menu item under the Fusion Scholarship Foundation, and you can find that and you can learn more about the foundation. There's actually a donate button if someone made, wanted to make a direct um, donation there as well. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So any, any one last big tip or big, you know, piece of advice for individuals, especially as we go back to, you know, the grounding question around negative self-talk and, and, and actually living, living, you know, their extraordinary life. Well, you know, I guess Bernadette, I, I would finish by saying the three things that I see most often that, that hold people back. One is the negative self-talk, right? They don't believe in themselves and they don't find a process to really turn that around. So they have positivity in their lives and in their mind. Uh, secondly, uh, they're afraid to dream big and they're afraid to write that down with specificity. So it just bounces around to their head until the next idea comes. And so nothing ever materializes. And then thirdly, uh, the last piece that we didn't talk about today was just that willingness to take that first step. It's that all important first step because people have dreams bouncing around their heads forever. And, um, and they say, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And we all know those people, but they never do it because they're afraid to take that first step. And what I found is that first step, as small as it may be, is the one that unleashes every, all the energy and potential around it. And so, um, if you, if you find a way to win positivity, positivity uh, with positivity in your mind and you write your big dreams down and then you take those first steps toward those dreams, uh, you're going to be well on your way. It's certainly far beyond 95% of America or the world. Yeah. Well, let's, um, let's make sure we touch on that because that, that is what puts everything into motion, right? And, and puts that action out there and, and creates that energy for the universe. So someone sitting here listening doesn't mean they don't even have to be a student they could be a 55 year old and they're just kind of like squirming because they do want to do something but they just haven't done it what would you recommend them to do for that first step and and how do they just kind of uh, kind of convince themselves to go and do it oh the good news is that with my book i think there's a platform to take them through it so the first step i would do is order the book right 
But for people who don't want to order the book, I would say take the time, sit down with a piece of paper and a pen or an uh, old school way or, or get ready with your, with your uh, computer and scratch out what you want your life to look like in 25 years or, or pick your time frame, 15 years, whatever the thing is, and just be as descriptive as possible about, you know, what does your career look like? Uh, what does your family situation look like? Um, what, are the, what are the character and values you stand for and exemplify? Uh, how are you giving back to the community? And we start to kind of create this life story well before our life story is even finished. And we have now started that process. And then you, you have to break those down in the shorter term goals too. So every year I write my own, I write annual goals and every quarter I, I write sub quarter goals. And uh, I have my kids write annual goals down as well. And, and uh, so I've kind of forced that habit upon them, but I just really believe that you break down big, big items into smaller manageable steps. Yep. And it makes it easy for that first step, that all important first step to get going. But nice. if you did nothing else but write out these goals, um, that's an amazing first step that, again, puts you well beyond uh, the vast majority of people in the world. Yeah. Uh, oh. Amen, brother. I know. <laughs> Amen. That is <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. And I remind, want to remind everybody, limit lift, nine steps to, la to launch your extraordinary life. And you can get that at PeteRupert.com or you can get that at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You all you have to do is Google it and you'll find it. And uh, to his point, one, it's an extraordinary tool to find your extraordinary life. But at the same time, it does give some, the proceeds of it does go to a great cause. So look into all of that at PeteRupert.com. Pete, this has been fabulous. Thank you so much. What a great way. Uh, to kick off the week. Thank you, Bernadette. Really, really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on, and and uh, congrats to your limitless success too. Oh, oh thank you. you. That's accomplished. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for everybody, please, PeteRupert.com. Look for his book, Limitless: Nine Steps to Launch Your One Extraordinary Life. And next week is our Ask Me Anything episode, everybody. So post those stories, questions, and challenges out on our Facebook. Uh, page or our Twitter page for Shedding the Bitch. And I will be sure to answer them immediately and provide you tips and advice. And then we bring them right here onto our first uh, Tuesday episode of Shedding the Bitch Radio. And we dig down into them even further. And you have an opportunity to join me and have a conversation with us. So again, Shedding the Bitch, ask me anything next Tuesday, noon Eastern time, be there. And I'll look forward to having, uh, having everybody back. And until then, have a beautiful, rich week. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bowes. Join Bernadette every Tuesday at noon Eastern as she helps you shift your bitches to riches. And the dialogue is always going on at SheddingTheBitch.com. See you next week. To, la to launch your extraordinary life, and you can get that at PeteRupert.com or you can get that at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You all you have to do is Google it and you'll find it. And uh, to his point, one, it's an extraordinary tool to find your extraordinary life. But at the same time, it does give some the proceeds of it does go to a great cause. So look into all of that at PeteRupert.com. Pete, this has been fabulous. Thank you so much. What a great way uh, to kick off the week. Thank you, Bernadette. Really, really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on, and, and uh, congrats to your limitless success, too. Oh, oh thank you. you That's accomplished. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And for everybody, please, PeteRupert.com. Look for his book, Limitless, Nine Steps to Launch Your One Extraordinary Life. And next week is our Ask Me Anything episode, everybody. So post those stories, questions, and challenges out on our Facebook uh, page or our Twitter page for Shedding the Bitch. And I will be sure to answer them immediately and provide you tips and advice. And then we bring them right here onto our first uh, Tuesday episode of Shedding the Bitch Radio. And we dig down into them even further. And you have an opportunity to join me and have a conversation with us. So again, Shedding the Bitch, ask me anything next Tuesday, noon Eastern time, be there. And I'll look forward to having, uh, having everybody back. And until then, have a beautiful, rich week. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Pete. Thank you for listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bowes. 
Join Bernadette every Tuesday at noon Eastern as she helps you shift your bitches to riches. And the dialogue is always going on at SheddingTheBitch.com. See you next week.